in a direct current circuit, the current and voltage are always constant. So in the circuit that we have over here, we would very easily be able to draw a graph of current versus time because the current is in a constant direction. The current value would be a constant value. And in much the same way, the voltage for the circuit or the voltage measured across this light bulb would also be a constant value because the current is constant in magnitude and direction. And so we could very easily calculate the power dissipated by the light bulb by saying or using the formula power is equal to current times voltage. And so our power would also be a constant value in this circuit. Now, when we look at an alternate current circuit, this is not as simple because, as you know, the current changes direction periodically. In South Africa, the current reverses direction 50 times per second. This over here is an alternating current power source or the symbol for an alternating current power source. And so the problem that we have is that the voltage that is being generated in the circuit is constantly changing, going from a minimum to a maximum to a minimum, and then repeating that process. And so as a result of that, the current is also going to be constantly changing in the circuit as the voltage increases, the current increases, and as they change direction, they change direction together. Now, the problem comes in when we try to measure that current using either our ammeter over here or the voltmeter, because if one were to say that the ammeter would simply measure the average, then we would find that the average current measured across this graph would be zero, as, as you can see the area above the graph, above the x-axis and the area below the x-axis is equal. And the same problem we have with the voltage. And so in order to solve this problem, what we do is we look once again at the power dissipated in the circuit where we know that power is the product of current and voltage. And so in this case, where both the current and the voltage are positive, the power value is also going to be positive. In this case over here, where the current and the voltage are both negative, the power value once again is positive and this repeats. So what we see now is that we still do not have a constant power value, but what we do have is we have something that is always positive. The reason why this helps is because this, this now allows us to calculate an average power. If we were able to calculate the area underneath this green curve, we would be able to see that the average power is equal to the maximum power that is generated or dissipated divided by two. So what that would mean is that our average power would fall somewhere in there as the constant power that is being dissipated, that is P average, where the peak of each of these curves is our maximum power, that being P max. What we now do is we use a bit of algebra and we say that since we know that the maximum power is very simply the product of the maximum current and the maximum voltage, we can say that P average is equal to I max, the maximum current, multiplied by V max, the maximum voltage, still divided by two. We can then separate that into two separate terms where we then say that is equal to I max divided by the square root of two and V max also divided by the square root of two. And then we can use these terms, I max over root two and V max over root two to define the reading that we would get in this circuit. And we call that the root mean square value. Once again, it is not an average value. The reason for that is because our average value would be zero. We call this the RMS, current and voltage. RMS meaning here the root mean square. And that is very simply calculated by taking the maximum current that is given and dividing that by the square root of two. And in the same way, we have something called the VRMS, the root mean square voltage, and that is then Vmax, also divided by 
the square root of 2. What this now allows us to do is it allows us to perform the usual Ohm's law type calculations using an alternating current circuit as we would have done in a direct current circuit. The only difference here is that there are now two possible currents and voltages that we can talk about, those being the RMS value and the maximum value. Now, in most questions, the value that is given when they start a question saying that a device is rated 240 volts, for example, that is always going to be the RMS voltage. So the RMS value is the value that is always going to be given. Obviously, that's unless stated otherwise where they explicitly say this device has a maximum voltage or maximum current. That is the main point of confusion. The other common question that comes up is something along the lines of being asked to define what exactly a root mean square current or voltage is or asked to explain what it means. And very simply, the RMS current or voltage is the equivalent current or voltage in a DC circuit that would produce the same power output as the AC circuit. So for example, if we said in this circuit over here that this device has a voltage of 200 volts, in order to get this light bulb to shine exactly as brightly in this circuit over here, the alternating current circuit, this would have to have an RMS value of 200 volts. And then using that, we could then calculate either the average voltage or something else. There are two large benefits to using alternating current. The first is that we can use transformers to easily change or increase or decrease that voltage, which makes alternating current easier to transmit over long distances, which is important for a national elect electricity grid. And the second is that it is cheaper to generate and the generators are cheaper to maintain.